approach a man dressed in all too familiar immaculate robes, with a strange voice marked by occasional growls that a boar might make, he is about to cast a spell on a terrified bunny, which he is gripping tightly in his worn and claw-like hands. Your approach startles him, however, causing him to relax his hold. Feeling the pressing fingers slipping from its little body, the bunny manages to break free and quickly disappears into the nearby rabbit hole. The Immaculate eyes you hatefully and yells. Curse you! I've got a few words left in this barren throat of mine, and it took me the damnedest time to get my paws on that long-eared good-for-naught. Elaborate on what? That I have no voice unless I take one, eh? That I am mute unless I make other voices mine? Mine for an infuriatingly short, short time? a nerve there, have I? So what's the matter <laughs> with Dagger Dasher over there? Can't he speak <laughs> for himself? Am I? I need to speak, you cretin. Need the spell to speak. Your lackey could talk too if he weren't so sque squeamish about it. You think I'd tell you? I'd sooner slice my own square. The Immaculate seems to be rapidly losing his ability to speak, managing only to growl like a boar in heat. Then he coughs violently and falls completely silent as he mouths torrents of unspoken expletives. His intention is rather hard to misread, though. He'll tear you limb from limb unless you, and especially Woolgraf, do him that courtesy first. urges you to search the dead Immaculate's body. The foul creature wouldn't talk, but perhaps his corpse may reveal information still. Looks like we found the cat that got your tongue, Holgraf. Or at least one of its cubs. The seven great abundance! Maybe we'll find your voice back, too.
it to me. You will take the guise I have given you. Never. Curse the human corpus, and curse the human consciousness you've given me. Far happier was I as naught but a carefree cat. Ours was happiness once, and can be again. Why would you resist such promise? Because you are no longer a woman worthy of love. It may be your brother's do, but you are a ghoul beyond redemption. This entire forest is nothing but your abattoir, and it sickens me. Perhaps what do I spy? Remarkable. A living, breathing something, it seems. You dare to approach me here, mortal? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know what I do? The sister of the king, of course. The phantom of the woods, of course. The mother of all corpses, of course. The ruler of the dead. It is self-evident. I am Cassandra, queen of the Phantom Forest. And you, you have come where you are not welcome. The only king, Bracchus Rex. He rules all of Rivalon, and I, his double, rule too. For a time, at least. We were forged together by our very souls, and all that was his was mine, and all that was mine, his. But it's no wonder you haven't heard of me. He's gouged me from history one, statue one, tablet one, scroll at a time. But make no mistake, I live. Strange, isn't it? Our love greater than the gods themselves can tear you from time. But time matters little to me anymore. No, it floats past me, unfelt as light upon a blind eye. To hide his weakness, to conceal his greatest misdeed. My brother was a kind ruler before he became a rabid tyrant, but his descent into madness was swift. Power he gained. And with it, a terrible fear of death that hounded him ceaselessly night and day. He stationed a hundred guards outside his bedchamber and mine. But still he kept awake all night, expecting assassins. He soon determined that he must diminish his risk. I, his sister, forged to his soul was his greatest liability. My death would spell his, and so he sought to break the bond between us. My brother is a clever sort. Once he sets his mind to a task, it's good as done. Bracchus discovered that while we lived, the forge could not be broken. But this did not deter him, no. For Bracchus, there are only temporary difficulties. And so he turned me into an immortal creature. Living, yes, but wedded to death. A lich destined to roam, ever half alive among the world of the living. We were lost to one another. We who had walked hand in hand through all of life. We who shared each thought, each trial, with perfect understanding between us. I was cast out and aside. And Bracchus, empowered by his new freedom, went on to rule. But I've never forgotten his betrayal. No, I've spent centuries searching, seeking until the perfect solution appeared before me. 
How better to have guaranteed my brother hated his own cold, cruel heart than to make him feel my torment? I discovered how to restore our soul forge, and I determined to bind our souls once more. The torment of the never-arriving grave would have haunted him as it haunts me. The pain his betrayal caused me would have been his to save her. But in the end, my brother found a worse fate than any I could have devised. Source King that he was. Brackers were stricken down, not once, but twice. First opposed, then resurrected, then defeated once more. I can think of no finer torture for that proud madman than to come to the cusp of glory, only to be cast back down for all time. Is that so? You, a frail mortal, laid low the eternal crown of Bracca's Rex? How sinfully inglorious. Yes, how humiliating for the so-called Lord of Chaos to find himself run through by a slave to age and order. I do believe thanks are in order. To show my gratitude, I will allow you to roam my woods at your own discretion. This is no mean feat that I swear to tolerate the stench of your living flesh, mortal. Take it as a tremendous honor. Is that so? And how might I weigh the debt of a mortal? Could you do more for me than, say, a boar, a wolf? Does your kind not serve me best when the lovely blush of rot swells along your delicate hide? Still, I do suppose we could come to an agreement. Ahu, the one I love is reluctant to admit that he loves me too. He clings to the past like a fading old man. So I desire to drive him from denial into acceptance. He is a stubborn one though, that pussycat. And he has mastered the magic I once filled him with better than I had foreseen. That is why I need an ingredient even he cannot resist. An ingredient called Stasis Fern. There is a spirit in this forest called Shiera, who is known to possess like rarities. Alas, she seems to have quite vanished. It's simple, really. Find her, obtain the Stasis Fern, and the spell you desire shall be yours. It is an anomaly. A plant that is said to have grown in another realm altogether than Rivalon. The first garden, a place of myth and miracle. There, so the spirits of this forest told me, it bloomed and delighted with its fragrance no more. Yet taken from the first garden and brought here, it took on source-like particularities. Its magic is one of permanence. A magic as eternal as the world from whence it came, and with it, what I want will be mine. Ahu, my lover forever. Obviously, but that would be a disaster now, wouldn't it? A disaster of such proportions that I'd have to vent my rage on your innards. There is nothing left to discuss, so oh frail little thing. Bring me the stasis fern so that I can show this cat one cannot defy, Cassandra. I need 
need you back, and I shall have you back. Centuries I've seen devoid Martin. of a single instance of affection. I wonder why. Everything you touch dies. Everything you behold withers. You are the queen of death, and your rule is one of bloody obliteration. I am what I was made, my pet. Why judge me by laws that do not pertain to my nature? And you, you too are what you were made. So accept. Feline is my nature, not human. I'll not allow you to defile my being any further. Source Hunter, how glad I am to see you. Tread carefully. Weigh your every word. Cassandra has become more devious than I ever dared dream. You hit the nail on the head, Hunter. That is exactly what Cassandra wants to do. Kill the part of me that is cat, and claim for herself that which is human. No! I cannot bear it. I cannot. I am a cat, and always was. I remember my many siblings. My mother giving a suckle, licking me clean with a gentle purr. Yes, I remember the freedom of a pre-conscious existence. That is who I am, not a man. For what is it that humanity has given me? Nothing but suffering. Nothing but hurt and heartbreak. So stop her, Hunter. For the love of the Seven, stop Cassandra. To be human for all time is a fate worse to me than death. All too well. Even in my human guise, I'd have gone quite as white as I am now at the mere mention of that otherworldly wonder. Stasis Fern. In Cassandra's hands, an instrument of ultimate torture. Ambrosia in my own. She'd use it to consolidate my human form everlastingly. You cannot let her have it at any cost. But should you find it, Hunter, please bring it to me instead. With Stasis Fern, that ultimate catnip, I can become the being I most desire to be. A cat once more and forever. And I shall have you back. Centuries I've seen devoid of a single instance of affection. I wonder why. Everything you touch dies. Everything you behold withers. You are the queen of death, and your rule is one of bloody obliteration. I am what I was made, my pet. Why judge me by laws that do not pertain to my nature? And you, you too are what you were made, so accept.
Intruder spied. Intruder spied. Intruder spied. The Temple of Death welcomes only its likeness. be defeated she will not die I spotted something interesting.
Intruder spied. Intruder spied. Intruder spied. Yeah, how could that happen? This. I Ooh, found some rummages around in some of the nearby bushes. He must have spotted something. Where is our spirit? Where has she fled? I needed that. Death welcomes only its likeness.
Out. I see a trap nearby.
our enemies have laid a trap. enemies have laid a trap. Look out! I see a trap nearby. experiments one could get up to here. Spectacular in the right hands. Horrific. Greetings, greetings, one of Cassandra's, I presume, yet rather more warm than is her preference, aren't you? And not a hint of rot. Strange, very strange indeed. But who am I to judge? I've been dead at least a oh, hundred years, and fashions certainly do change. <laughs> the Alchemist, of course. I think I must have had a proper name once, but there hasn't been much occasion to use it for the past several decades. No, no, Alchemist suits me just fine, don't you think? <laughs> Why, isn't it obvious? <laughs> Beautiful alchemy! That science of the gods themselves! Yes, before my change, I was a regular master of the alchemical arts. Tinctures for princes, wounded pride, powders to smooth skin ravaged by time. I could craft them all with ease. <laughs> These days, of course, I serve only Lady Cassandra. How she discovered a method of extending life without the use of the stone of the philosopher, I cannot say. She never revealed much in the way of secrets to yours truly. But as you can see, I'm as alive, well, nearly so, as I was many years before nature's expiration date. <laughs> ah, a kind ruler is she. 
Leave me to my experimentations and my devices here, so long as I honor her occasional requests for this and that. Nightmare potions, paralysis salves, essentials for one in her line of work. <laughs> I haven't heard anything from her esteemed brother in quite some years, though. Tell me, have you word of our great overlord, Bracchus Rex? Is that so? Well, my point about changing fashions rings true. Yet, his sister seems to be living on quite fine. Very strange, considering their forge of soul, but... My... Oh my goodness! Be that he... to his own sister? No! Oh, it's much too ghastly! Heavens, a thing like that? <laughs> well, you see, it's no secret that the great Bracchus Rex and his sister, our own Cassandra, were soul-forged from a very young age. This gave them special insights into one another's psyches and they were inseparably close. It also meant, however, that killing one would kill the other. If, say, Bracchus received an arrow through his heart in battle, Cassandra might drop dead over toast and tea halfway round the world. <laughs> to break a forge of souls completely, but it is rumored that certain steps could be taken. If one member of the forge were to be turned, for instance, into a half-living, half-dead creature, he or she would attain a form of immortality. <laughs> Thus, the fully human member of the pair would be freed of the influence of his or her counterpart. himself who granted Cassandra this certain brand of immortality. Yes, the great king was gaining power quickly. Ha! I imagine his greatest vulnerability, Cassandra, had to be dealt with. But it is a terrible fate, you see. A lich, half woman, and half corpse, unable to enjoy the pleasures of life but only to pursue death. To think that one could exact such a fate upon one's own flesh and blood. Unfathomable, ha! Perhaps you can. Of course you may, but if you're having trouble with the whole affair, I'd suggest that perhaps it's your perception you ought to work on first, ha! <laughs>
You call to Woolgraf. He awaits your queries. Woolgraf eagerly grabs the potion and quaffs it down like a cold beer on a hot day. Presently, he starts to cough, then inhales the air deeply and... talks. I... I can speak! I can bloody well speak! This is amazing. This is... I want to sing! I want to shout! <laughs> Hells, bells on a cracker. How deep will Grafos sound? Well, then again, last time I heard my own voice, I was about a ten-year-old pipsqueak after all. Not a weather-beaten, whip-licked, sorcerer-slaying ruffian. Ah. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Governor. Really, I can't. No gift as precious, no gift as titillating as the power of speech. Oh, those rolling eyes, those teeth flicking teas. <laughs> Don't mind my crude way me words, my friend. In all those years of ever so dreary internal monologue, I haven't quite moved on from the street kid vernacular. A girl's a peach, a boy's a tosser, and a so-called great big authority figure, whether a John or a Jill, is a governor. But that's neither here nor there, is it? I've got me voice back. I've got me strength back. And I'm more ready than ever to kick sorry, saggy sorcerer behind. On we go. The job ain't finished yet, and my dagger's dying for some action. What's on your mind? Ha! It's bloody wonderful, isn't it? Everything is just so much easier. You want something, you just say so. Or you just take it. But that's the road to be talking. Why, good old-fashioned practice. You'd be surprised how easily people miss details that are right in front of their crooked noses. The art of observation, Governor. It's a skill. No cat burglar can do without. Just as important as fleet footedness and sleight of hand. I practiced and practiced until a fleck of disturbed dust became as obvious to me as a bullseye painted on a barn. People think they can hide things, keep secrets, but whatever they do, they can't hide them from our wool graph. <laughs> ah, that was one of my famed ploys. I told one of the local little brats, and I'm telling him he'd write it down, that all his wishes would be granted if he threw all the gold he had down that well. <laughs> a real-life wishing well? Obviously, the Jack and Apes told everyone that would listen all about it, and he shouted it down the ears of those that wouldn't, to boot. Worked like a chum. I'm dead or not. They went out in droves to actually wish their walking corpses away. Easy bloody money, Governor. Shoot!
is another man's trash. Careful now, that's a trap. Careful, oh, I've spotted a trap. Jack, uh, traps thick as ticks around here. And there's a big juicy chest under there as well. Sandra's bones. Once they are ash, she'll be vulnerable once more. Will you do the honors, or shall I? to cleanse this phantom forest of the Lich that haunts it. Stitch in time, hey, my friends. Bloodstone, as powerful as it is sinister. I see a trap nearby. Look out! I see a trap Hold. nearby. Our enemies have laid a trap.
Hold. Our enemies are laying a trap. I see a trap in the fire. Careful, I spotted a trap. Hold. Our enemies have laid a trap. Careful now. That's a trap. Halt! Our enemies have laid a trap.
Seven, great abundance! <sighs> Mind if we take a bit of a breather, Governor? Even a blood ant ties a blood once in a cool blue moon. Oh, that's the spirit. To your very good health. Yeah, that in this spot. Now then, as for the real reason for this little interruption, I've been doing a lot of thinking, you know. Now, don't laugh. I have. Thinking, that is, about those boyhood fancies of mine. I've become a source hunter, a great big hero in a big bad world. Back in the day, your order refused me. Dismissed me like a flea-ridden street hound because I couldn't talk. Fair enough, you know, no hard feelings. But now, I can talk. I can talk, and I can fight, and I can hunt. You've shown me what it's like to be a source hunter. The nobility of it. The worthiness of living a life in service of justice and chivalry. It's not too late for me. I can still become the hero of my youth. But that is not my decision to make. No, it's yours. So, I'm asking you, a source hunter, tried and true, whether you'll knight me here and now. Whether you'll make me one of the Order. Will you? I heartily concur. Woolgraf, we dub thee a knight in the Order of Source Hunters. A knight? A, a, a Source Hunter? That such an honour would befall me still a... I could jump for joy, scream and dance, but so... So solemn is this moment that I can but calmly bask in its glory. I, I, I won't let you down, Governor. I won't. I'll do the order proud. I'll swear it.
sausage bitches looking at the bring out bitches, ever be so jolly times, make it up. Body lines. God, seems good to have a voice. I've never heard such a song, my friend. What does it mean? Untainted in these woods? How... how is it possible? And what a welcome sight you are to eyes grown so weary of chaos and corruption. Do you feel the spirit of these woods, Blessed One? It's growing fainter every day, overcome by darkness, pain, and terror. My mentor, the forest spirit, is dying, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. I am the Spirit's Apprentice, and it was once our happy lot to care for and heal the flora and fauna of this forest. I have so much still to learn, but my mentor has been overcome by the powerful forces of evil that have invaded our home. Shiara is her name, and the hum of her energy among the trees is growing fainter, a dying heartbeat I know not how to save. We were caught by a terrible demon, a sick soul who thrives on the anguish he draws from others. I escaped, only to find that without Chiara's protection, I was an easy target for the Leaf Queen. I am a lamb among wolves, and Chiara's power is waning. Without help, this forest and all its creatures will succumb to evil. I've seen these woods pass through the hands of terrible fiend after fiend. First came the sorcerers, tainted by cruel magic. Next came the Lich Queen, mired in sorrow and a thirst for death. But I would have served them all in gratitude if it meant we'd be free of Balbarith. He thrives on pain. He feeds on it like a bee to a flower. He must have caught whiff of Shiara's sanctuary here. Her home for creatures tainted by source, and figured he'd found himself a never-ending feast of pain. He captured us both, Chiara and I, and so the creatures of these woods were left vulnerable. I managed to escape while he glutted himself upon the fears of an unlucky passer through, but I could not free my master in time. He keeps her there in his lair even now, waiting for her to break so that he may consume her. Is that why you've come? Do you intend to destroy Balbarith? Blessed, I knew you were, but your bravery is... astounding. To find the demon, you must make a path through the many creatures he's tormented. Tread around them with care, O oh hero. They have been tainted. But any anguish you inflict upon them will only feed Balbarith and make him stronger. Once Balbarith is destroyed, Shiara will be free. In time, her spirit will heal, and with it, this forest. Thank you, brave Blessed One. Good luck. My thousand year search is coming to Careful, I spotted a trap. Balbarith is near. A few more steps, no more. Oh, dear. As good as a new penny! Dearest master, I have failed you. Into the fray oh, once more! My friend, I have heard of the sp Again. Now, she's fine. Don't. As good as a new penny! I needed that. 